hey, so remember when I said I was going to do some Smash Project M set analysis type of stuff? Well, here we are. I'm going to do that now. Um, this is going to be, like, super off-the-cuff, informal. I've never done anything like formal match analysis before. So if I do, if I get something wrong, sorry, I, if this becomes, uh, like a, like a permanent or regular fixture on this channel, this kind of thing, I will work out the kinks in the formula over time. Uh, a couple of things of note first before we start. One, I will probably be pausing fairly frequently to drink water because for some reason my body has decided that it does not want to stay hydrated today, so I've got two full bottles sitting next to me. Um, I apologize if any dry mouth sounds go through the mic, it's not my in intention to let that be the case. And two, I'm assuming my recording software is actually picking this up correctly, but because I'm working with two monitors and the software is a little finicky sometimes, it had better be recording the right screen. I've tested like six times, it should be fine. If it's not, then I guess screw it and I'll start over from the beginning. Anyway. Let's actually talk about the set that I'm going to look at here today. This was from, I want to say, a week and a half ago? Uh, two weeks ago? Something like that. This is a set between a couple of Washington's Project M players, TM87 and Forest Fire, both of whom are sponsored by and part of the Eastside Smash crew. Um, just, just for a little bit of background here, TM87, who I'll be referring to as Tomo most of the time because that's just how most people around here refer to him. Tomo is rank 9 on Washington's power rankings, so he is considered the ninth best player in Washington as of the last ranking season. Forest Fire is, uh, he's very skilled. He's, he's one of the players that I would call in our region here a contender is the term that I use. Basically, if Washington's power rankings extended, say, from 1 to 20 instead of 1 to 10 like they currently do, Forest would be somewhere between 11 and 20. I wouldn't I wouldn't even dare to try and give a specific placing for that, but I think he's top 20, pretty sure. Uh, so anyway, um, this set is an incredibly rare thing because Forrest actually does win here. He does take the set over Tomo for the first time. One of the few people who actually can, who, who has actually done that in Washington in the last like six months. It's It was a pretty huge deal when it happened. And I thought, you know what? Why not go through and see if I can find out exactly why he won or what what got him to the point that that, you know, made him eke out the victory. That's that's what I'm going to be looking for. So I'm going to be analyzing this set through the lens of why did Forrest win? Kind of what I'm looking at. OK, so anyway, game one. They start on PS2, everybody starts on PS2 around here, and if you don't start on PS2 around here, usually we just kind of random between the middle three starters, between Smashville Battlefield and PS2. Um, these guys start here, I can see why. PS2 is, is, is decent for Forrest because it gives him a lot of room to move around because Ike's mobility is very horizontal based and he can get to a lot of places, especially with those platforms. Um, they're not quite the same as Battlefield in that they don't quite give him a recovery like an extra recovery option, he can't get to the platforms to recover very easily, and if he can, it's reactable and punishable, especially by a character like Meta Knight. At the same, at the same time, for, for Tomo in particular, his Meta Knight is very, very, very passive. So, like, the bigger the stage, the more time he has to sit back and wait for you to mess up so he can obliterate your life. So let's get into this. Starting off here. Also, also one other thing I want to mention. I do hope that I got the audio balance right. I've I've tested it as many times as I tested the recording, so hopefully it's okay. So we start off here. The interesting thing about this start is that immediately Tomo is the first one to approach. Now, Forrest likes to say that he's still working on his on his like his uh, defensive game, which to an extent I can see why he thinks that. But if you watch this set, you'll see that these two players are like super, super passive. They got they've they've got their punishes down pretty well, but Forrest spends the vast majority of this set making Tomo approach him. He camps on platforms, he camps on the sides of the stage, that kind of stuff. And I think that right there is really the key factor that made Forrest win this set, is the fact that he made Tomo play his game. Normally Tomo makes people play his game by never approaching, but Forrest made it happen here. So let's look at this. Okay, so first things first, 
Um, forest. Jeez, uh, how do I even how do I even describe this? Actually, you know what? Let's just keep going. So in the first few seconds of this game, you can see basically what's happening here is Forrest is trying to evade... He's trying to evade Tomo's... evade Tomo entirely and, like, sort of read Tomo's approach options because, like I said, Forrest is making Tomo approach. Um, so far in these times, uh, Forrest is getting some... getting some wrong reads. He's getting some wrong... wrong positioning, wrong spacing. And Tomo is doing the Meta Knight thing where... You mess up your spacing once, and you eat, you know, 20% from up airs or something like that. Sharking on platforms, avoiding neutral airs. Whoa, the video just skipped there. Let's go back a few seconds. What are we at? Classic up throw down B. Tomo goes, or er, Forrest goes for a low up special recovery there, which is a decent choice, but Tomo is a very smart player and knows how to work around that. Forrest went for the reverse up B, probably hoping to catch Tomo, like, seeing if if Tomo was going to go and, say, grab the ledge or something like that, or actually go out for an edge guard, like, drop off for an air or something. That reverse up B would have clipped him and, you know, stopped that, stopped that edge guard attempt. But, you know, Tomo just kind of threw a back air and stuffed it entirely. I don't know if Meta Knight's bear outspaces uh, Ike's up. Be. I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, so that's kind of an interesting choice. Anyway, with that, uh, with that back air, that's a stock down, a zero to death. Tomo looking as Tomo as ever. Basically, basically he just abuses Meta Knight's incredibly good options to the degree that very few people know how to challenge and work around it. You'll see over the course of this set that Forrest is basically adapting fairly quickly and learning how to avoid boost grabs, uh, boost grabs, jump cancel grabs, etc, etc. But at the same time, he's still Ike, he still gets juggled. Now, now that forward smash... <laughs> I just want to talk about that that F smash for, for, for a moment here. So, so that forward smash, I'm not sure if that was a read or a bait or what, but basically, after those two fares right there, he sets Tomo up for, in a very specific position where his recovery abilities as Meta Knight are, they're pretty good, but they usually lose to large disjoint, and the important thing to keep in mind is that as he um, as he uses any of his any of his specials to recover, he obliterates all of his available jumps afterwards. So most of the time when Tomo recovers, he uses all his jumps, and then he finds some way to get back on stage, be it a, a side special, which I think is his favorite, down special like he's going for here. He was hoping to juke Forrest by, like, I think he predicted that what he would do is that he would jump up a couple times, and then he would drop and down B. He was probably thinking Forrest would jump out for a forward air, which is one of Ike's strongest edge guarding tools. Uh, Forrest did not. Instead, he read this option, but he wasn't quite... He wasn't quite acting to predict the, the the dimensional cape. What he's doing right here is he's basically saying, okay, if you're in this position and you're doing some kind of recovery towards the stage, you're either going to go for a forward special, which this F smash would probably have traded with it, I think, or you're going for a down special, which you're not going to get enough distance to get behind me. So, you know, get get wrecked. You're going for, like, maybe a neutral special, which, at the same time, you couldn't possibly get past this F-Smash. It's freaking huge, right? So, Forrest had a good guess here. He guessed that Tomo would jump a few times, drop, and recover. Tomo really does prefer the side B recovery most of the time. So, there you go. Nice read, good stock taken, etc., etc. And then in that little exchange there, you saw very clearly what Tomo had just done basically forest is like okay you've spawned in movement option side b get to center stage to get past you tomo knows he's gonna do that stuffs it with a nair and then immediately catches forest jump because forest mo in most of this set when i watched it uh like about 30 minutes ago i saw most of the time when forest was in disadvantage he would get away from tomo by jumping he would he would jump out of shield he would jump out of hit stun he would jump out of combos all sorts of stuff which is a really effective way to get away from Meta Knight, unless you've got a Meta Knight player who is really good at covering landings. Um, so in this particular instance here... 
So Forrest jumped up, went for a neutral special, which has armor and also stalls his falling. Um, that's that's a very forest fire thing to do. I don't know. It works sometimes, I guess. It's got a huge hitbox. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Tomo just kind of lets him get back to the ledge there. There wasn't a whole lot he could really do to stop him. Pokes with a down tilt, expects some jump in and stuff. Goes for a nair to stuff it, but Forrest has some tricky movement with Ike. Ike's side special, the quick draw, you can jump out of it and do all sorts of shenanigans. Like you just saw there, that was a pivot grab. Was that a, it was an up throw, I think? Pretty sure that was an up throw. So, gets off of the ledge. Basically, yeah, yeah, anyway. Yep, so up throw. Tries to get some kind of tech chase on the platform with the neutral air. Tries to jump back onto stage. Gets, gets nared. Meta Knight, Meta Knight stuff. And like, like here, like I was saying a bit ago, how these players were playing very passively towards each other. Um, you can see pretty much immediately as soon as Forrest spawns in, he goes to cover something on a platform, approaches a little bit with quick draw, but then immediately jumps away and positions himself facing backwards. Tomo was thinking he'd, he'd like quick draw in and go for some aggressive option, which is what most of the time when Tomo does well against like lower level players compared to him, he beats them by stopping approaches with Meta Knight's Nair or some other, some, something along those lines. Forrest knows this. Forrest chooses not to approach. Tomo wanted to react to that jump back thing, went in for, I think that was a boost grab. It was either meant to be a boost grab or something like that. Forrest knows this is going to happen and runs. He just straight up runs away. Now, his, his attempted approach again was a ground of quick draw, which gets beaten by Meta Knight's frame, like frame three down tilt or whatever. Some crap like that. That was an interesting little exchange right there, a l a l an interesting little combo. So, Forrest power shields the up smash, that was a very well-timed, or er, perfect shield, I guess, very well-timed perfect shield. Grab, up throw, and then these two neutral airs were, the first one was basically, I'm gonna combo you, and the second one was, this is now a DI trap. So if you look a little closely here, the, the knockback angles on Ike's Nair are very strange. But as far as I can tell, if you're behind him when he, like right here, he hits with the reverse, uh, this is kind of grainy, I know, but he hits with the reverse hit of neutral air, which has some fairly out and away knockback. I think what Tomo was going, was, was thinking here was that he'd be hit with more of the forward side, which would knock him away. So he DI'd towards center stage, which sets him up because that was the reverse hit for another neutral air, because he's just right there. Right, so then you get that other Nair, also a sort of reverse hit. It was like, it was like kind of a reverse hit, but kind of sort of not a little, a little higher. So at this point, Tomo's DI'ing in, right? And he's thinking, okay, okay, this is a problem. If he gets me with another neutral air or an up air or something, I need to be DI'ing off stage, like behind him so I can actually get away. Combo DI, right? But then the DI trap happens. Back air. So after that, after that back air, because, you know, obviously if you're DIing away from Ike's, or DIing, I guess, behind him on Ike's back air, you're pretty much screwed, especially as a character who's a fast follower like Meta Knight with, I'll be honest, mediocre recovery options. Expend your jumps. Go for a side B. That side B was way low. I think, I think Tomo probably just misinputted. He wanted to get another jump and then a side B, which probably would have caught Forrest um, just at the end of his invulnerability frames from grabbing the ledge. But, nah, Tomo, Tomo messed it up. You saw there immediately, as Forrest was charging a quick draw, Tomo went for a Nair to stuff it. Forrest waited for a bit for the Nair to end, and then let go of the quick draw to actually, like, move in and try to find a way to punish that neutral air. Which, for, which for the record, if you're fighting Meta Knight, you need to know, it's, it's kind of like fighting Luigi, you need to know how to bait the neutral air and how to punish it accordingly. Okay, so you, exactly why did Forrest stop there? Let's take a look at that. So he goes for the quick draw. This is a thing that I've noticed Forrest has done both times. He took a stock from Tomo and Tomo spawned back in was he would immediately be on whatever side of, the, side of the stage. He would immediately go to charge a quick draw and probably just try to find his way to center stage to wait out the, or center stage or past to wait out um, the iframes on Tomo's respawn, which is not necessarily a bad thing to do, but it's not 
the best option when you're dealing with a character who has incredibly quick uh, movement stuffing options like Meta Knight. So he gets beaten out there. Tumbo starts going for starts going for some Meta Knight stuff. That spot dodge that Forrest just did there. And when I say Meta Knight stuff, by the way, in this particular case, at low percents, the best thing he can do, especially against a character with a not super great tech roll, is down throw and back throw tech chases, which is something Tomo's very proficient at. So he tries to go for another. He waited for the spot dodge, but then I think that that dash attack was sincerely just meant to be a boost grab or maybe a boost pivot grab. Which is, to be to be fair, a very, a very tough input to get consistently. Immediately after that exchange, you saw that Forrest jumped away again. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about what just happened there. That was basically just Tomo's like, yeah, okay, I know you're gonna either tech in place or tech roll away, so I'm just gonna bat, I'm just gonna bap you with an inter interdimensional cape. Uh, Forrest was diing fairly well for it, like kind of, sorta. Let's let's look at that again and see if we can figure out exactly what the di was like there. Yeah, okay, so he was tech rolling out this DI. That DI was actually, it was actually a pretty good reaction. I think during the tech roll animation, he's, he knew he was going to get hit with an interdimensional cape, so he DI'd kind of sort of up and away, not completely away, which if he were still DI'ing to the right, like during the tech roll, he would be dead. That would just be a dead Ike. He barely makes it back with a side B and then walks away just to avoid things. Going for another hard read. That was a very well-timed interdimensional cape. That right there, that that IDC that Tomo landed there. Well, let's let's take a look at this a little more closely. Goes for a hard read. Gets a down air to punish. Was that actually was that punishing uh, a tech roll? Nah, it was punishing. It was punishing Nef Smash. He reads the tech roll. Or maybe predicts might be a better word for it. Not quite the same as free. Sorry, not a tech roll, a getup attack. That getup attack, if it was a getup attack or a neutral getup or anything like that, would have been caught by that interdimensional cape. So Tomo was basically thinking, okay, I know you're probably not going to tech roll away again because you just did that and I just hit you with an interdimensional cape. So you're going to do something... You're going to do something right where you are, right? And so he, he gets the, the appropriate prediction and gets a kill. And by the way, I know I did say I was going to frame this from the perspective of why did Forrest win the set, but um, but Tomo, I already know Tomo wins this first game, so I'm just kind of going from what I see on screen. I'm honestly not even sure what to say about those few seconds there. Like, I'm really not. That was mostly just... Mostly just Tomo doing Meta Knight stuff quite well. Crouch canceling. Basically, like, like you see, as soon as he gets a down tilt and he sets Forrest up in a tech situation, he runs in and crouches immediately. One of Meta Knight's strongest tools far and away in neutral is crouch cancel down tilt crouch cancel down smash also that is a very interesting way for a neutral air to kill so yeah you'll you'll really have to forgive me here for this last stock of forests in game one i'm not even sure what to analyze it's just a whole lot of of Tomo getting the slight edge of frames and frames and spacing. Something that I think I think um, should be kept in mind here is that Forrest, when he's in disadvantage, like I said earlier, usually finds a way to jump out of it. Um, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to be using more aggressive more aggressive landing options and that sort of stuff to get yourself out of disadvantage, but uh, Tomo is a master of crouch canceling. So, oof, pardon me. So, unless you're going to use, like, really, really strong options, uh, and even then some of those won't actually work, Tomo will just crouch cancel it. Meta Knight will just crouch cancel it. 
That's probably why Forrest jumps away during this advantage most of the time. So that was a that was a that was a drop punish right there. Uh shoot, what do I even say about it? Just straight up. He gets the up throw, he gets the neutral air. In this position right here, uh, I think whether or not he'd be able to land any other follow-up was probably not guaranteed. I'm not sure not sure why the jab happened there. <laughs> I think he thought he saw he saw Tomo he thought Tomo was gonna jump back in, so he went for some kind of punish. I don't know why a jab happened. It might have just been an input error, I don't know. Goes for a drop nair, gets beaten, goes for get up attack, gets crouch cancelled. And okay, so Against a player like Tomo, who who is very passive, that that landing that landing eruption isn't I mean you, it's so easy for Meta Knight to punish, especially a Meta Knight like Tom, like Tomo who does so much sitting and waiting and watching. You're gonna get caught. That was really good di on that on that down throw right there. By the way, um, if he had di'd any other way, this would have been a free kill. However, he just barely barely does not get clipped by the forward air. Catches Tomo recover or catches Forrest recovering with an up special. Yep, yep. Using the legend vulnerability gets a drop Nair, and then that is a stage spike. That is game one. Come back when you, can put on you know, I'll be honest. Uh, this this analysis stuff is really tiring. <laughs> this is kind of hard. It's fun, but it's difficult. All right, so we're looking at we're looking at bands right now. Neither of these guys are gonna switch characters, obviously. Tomo bands Wario Land and Green Hill Zone. Interesting choices, uh, especially because Meta Knight does actually thrive on at least Wario Land. He thrives on Wario Land because Meta Knight is super super good at winning. Winning or trading in neutral is really beneficial to him, like in general, but especially on small stages because that just puts your opponent way closer to death which is something Meta Knight loves. He's like, he's like if Marth didn't have Marthritis, that's Meta Knight. <laughs> Early kills, all the time. Meta Knight is a really good character in this game, if you couldn't tell. Um, he also banned those two stages specifically because while they do benefit, while they do benefit Meta Knight a fair amount in the whole, you can kill earlier, etc., etc. Ike is a freaking powerhouse. It takes like four or five strikes from Ike, and that's a stock gone. So what Tomo's thinking here is I do not want to give Forrest the ability to kill me extremely early. Meta Knight is actually one of the lightest characters in this game and one of the fastest fallers. He's he's up there on both on both of those both of those spectrums. So early stages where he can be killed early where he's kind of afraid that his opponent will start to catch on to his habits and get those reads and get those kills he wants to avoid that ideally for tomo in this situation he would go he, uh forest would go to fountain of dreams which would not happen because ike doesn't necessarily like that stage too much um otherwise i think the rest of these are pretty much fair game forest thanks for oh oh right and one other thing um Ike's recovery is aided immensely by the fact that he can wall jump out of his side B. So by getting rid of two of the three stages, that becomes important in a moment, two of the three stages that have walls as opposed to just like sort of slopes where there is a ledge, by removing those as options, he severely limits Forrest's recovery, recovery abilities. However, Forrest takes some time, black screen and all, and Delfino C. Okay, so this stage has the walls, which means uh, Forrest gets a lot more, a lot, a lot more effective options for recovery, which he does use, but he also, we'll talk about, we'll talk about it more here in a bit, uh, why his recovery is not the best on this stage, but also, you know, why it works. Mostly just because it's really, it's, it's, it's really kind of hard to deal with Ike's up B for the most part. Um... The other great thing about this stage is that it is 
I don't know if it is the widest stage in the game, but it's up there. Like, the blast zones are far away in all directions, which is fine for both characters, except that because of that, Ike is going to have the edge in killing far more than, than, than Meta Knight will. Meta Knight is good at killing at pretty much any percent, um, but his, his, his kill options are... Oh, I don't know. They're diable? They're reactable, I guess? Other than Gimps, which, I mean, that's every stage. That's Meta Knight for you. But Ike doesn't really care if the Blast Zones are way larger, because that just means instead of four or five hits to death, it's like five or six hits, or maybe seven hits. Meta Knight has to work a lot harder for kills on larger Blast Zones, basically. Also, this gives Forest a lot, Forest a lot more ways to evade Tomo, which is something you'll see a lot during this game. Um... He'll, he'll run to platforms, he'll, he'll quick draw away, all sorts of stuff like that. So let's get into this. Immediately, immediately in this game, this is, that, that was the most hilarious first few seconds. Let's just do that again, let's just do that again. So they spawn in. Very, very, like, immediately you can see that Forrest has got a fairly strong handle on, on how to deal with Tomo for the rest of this set. He walks in slowly, while Tomo kind of dashes back and then dashes in, and what Forrest has done here is he's conditioned Tomo to, to, to think that he has to approach, which, which obviously, if you're playing defensively the whole time, if you're playing to stay away, to get away, your opponent has to approach. Forrest knows Tomo is going to do this, so he immediately just stuffs that dash in with an F-Tilt. He just, he just crushes it. That, that is, that is fantastic. And there's the camera. So in that little section right there, you're seeing a little bit of misspacing from, from Tomo and some, and some better, some better spacing and positioning from Forrest for punishes. What, what I... What I take away from watching, from having watched this game too, is that Tomo is starting to get a little scared. Now, normally Tomo is one of the players in our region who has, like, nerves of steel. Like, actually just straight up his brain is made of titanium or something. But, but there are some cracks in there. Like, why Tomo loses to the people he does is because Tomo, for as, as skilled as he is, has a very... It, it is kind of a flowcharty playstyle. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's incredibly effective. But when you start to get players who play against him enough that they learn what that flowchart is, um, like like Forrest has in this set, you you start to see you start to see that plan fall apart. The flowchart, as far as I know, at its core is I'm going to make you approach and I'm going to punish you. And I know I've I've know I've stressed this point to no end in this video, but Forrest knows that, and Forrest chooses to not approach <laughs> it's it's fantastic like he'll he'll move himself closer occasionally but he does that to threaten space not to not to actually like go in see what else we can spot here tomo goes to land on a platform eats a back air for it does an unsafe dare on shield Something else to consider here is that the platforms on this stage, just like any stage, give Meta Knight a lot, a, a lot more combo opportunities. Mostly just because Meta Knight's up air and his neutral air are extremely good for sharking on platforms, which is basically just I'm under you and I will hit you a bunch. Um, if you don't know a whole lot about Smash, something you, you need to know is the fact that if you're above your opponent, you are in a bad place nine times out of ten, and you don't want to be above them. You want them to be above you. Just, just based on the way the game, the game works, the the engine and physics and mechanics and stuff. Anyway, um, the platforms give Meta Knight a lot more sharking options, combo opportunities, but they also give Forrest a lot of escape opportunities from those combos. Uh, Meta Knight's up air is legitimately one of the best combo tools in the game, and it pretty much always has in every Smash ever that he's a part of. Always has been. So having platforms as a way to escape is really valuable. Now. The only way that's actually going to work is if your opponent, in this case Forrest, knows when you're going to go for, knows when Meta Knight's going to go for a shark, go for sharking, knows exactly when, and then knows how to get away from it. I think he's got, a, I think he's got that down pat pretty well here. Tomo's looking for a way to land. 
does manage to get back down. Tomo managed to get back down to the stage there because Forrest hung back. Because Forrest has been being, you know, very defensive. Now, at this point in the set, I think... Maybe not at this point, but somewhere along this game, I think is a point where Forrest should recognize that he's conditioned Tomo to have to approach. And that way, being more aggressive is actually a little bit more valuable. But he doesn't have to do that. He still wins the set. Mistimed IDC is a punish and a tech roll. Alright, so that recovery you just saw right there is the reason that Tomo banned the other two stages with walls. Um, because Forrest can just kind of do the wall jumpy thing that he does. Something that I do want to point out, though, is that through the rest of this game, that exact motion you saw right there is, like, the only way that Forrest recovers the whole way, and the whole the whole game. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of hard to mess with that motion, but he side Bs and then wall jumps, and then pretty much at exactly the same timing every single time activates his up B and B reverses it. Or maybe it's a turnaround, I'm not sure. Every single time, same position, same timing, um... It's something that Tomo could have capitalized on and could have, like, could have fought against and worked around because Forrest has that specific habit, but, this is the important thing, most of the time, because Meta Knight's overall range and disjoint is not nearly as large as Ike's, he has a hard time contesting Ike's recovery, so Tomo usually chooses, usually, I'm saying, usually chooses to, to, to stay away and let Forrest get back to stage because most of the time, as Meta Knight, you really don't want to mess with that up B. So we move on a little bit here. That was... that was a... I'm not even sure how to describe that. That was just Tomo being really smart. He's just like, what he, I think what he was thinking there, Forrest was probably predicting that Tomo would go for a side B up to the platform, or maybe an up B and then go up and around or something like that. So he was going to... You know, he was going to do like a ledge jump, back air, something like that, take advantage of some iframes or something. Tomo predicted that, and see, now we're playing chess and we're getting several steps ahead and behind of each other. Tomo predicted that and decided to just IDC straight to the ledge. It worked. It was a good prediction. I'm not going to say it was lucky, it was just straight up a good prediction. So he gets back to stage, reads the tech in place, gets a down tilt, nothing off of it. What Forrest has done here is that he's kind of sort of got Tomo in a place where Tomo doesn't doesn't always go for his guaranteed follow-ups because Forrest has, has got him thinking, why should I do that if he's going to jump out every single time? That tornado right there was meant to be edge cancelled on the platform. Uh, I don't think the platforms are currently moving, so that wasn't the thing that tripped him up. If that were actually edge cancelled, he would have made it back in time, and I think probably would have cancelled it and immediately gone for Nair, which would have stuffed out any any punish opportunities Forrest had. But because he slightly missed that edge cancel, Forrest got the... what was that, a reverse bear? I think. The forward air that Forrest threw out there was meant to cover any other special approach recovery options, like that fair would have outspaced a side B or a down B towards the, towards the stage. Um... And then as soon as he saw that Tomo went for uh, went for a tornado, he went up and punished it. Okay. Tomo spawns back in. Now there's an interesting thing. Like I said earlier that most of the time when Tomo respawns after Forrest gets a kill, Forrest will go to the side of the stage, charge um, charge quick draw, and then dash away to, to, to be able to wait out, like dash past, to be able to wait out the iframes. But in this particular case, what Forrest did was he went up and he got on a platform. He's he's picked up on the fact that that's not a very effective strategy against Tomo because Meta Knight can just stop that. He can just stop it. He just kills it, right? So let's continue on here. Already, you can see Forrest kind of platform camping, trying to stay out of trying to stay out of Tomo's effective vertical range. There, right there, you actually saw the eruption work. That hitbox, like I said a bit ago, is actually really freaking huge. I would know. Forrest has killed me with a fully charged eruption in bracket once. That happened. Don't tell anyone I said that. Um, so because of because of the knockback and the fact that Meta Knight is a super fast, uh, like a, a fairly, fairly fast faller, 
Popped him up, got on the platform, uh, in a, into a tech situation immediately. Look at that. Pretty much, pretty much the same height, the same spacing after the wall jump away from the stage to do an up B back. It works. It actually just straight up works. There isn't a whole lot that Meta Knight can do to contest that, because if he tries, odds are he will get knocked away and he will lose his jumps and he will die, because Meta Knight's recovery really is exploitable. We see another crouch cancel from Tomo, which is great. Some sharking with a nair on the platform. I don't know what that forward smash was meant to do. <laughs> Maybe Tomo was thinking if Forrest did the did the up special up and then landed on the stage, he could get the F smash out just below the hitbox on the, the like the, the falling hitbox on the up B. Maybe? I'm not sure. I don't know if that works. But because he missed that, Forrest gets to get back on stage pretty much for free, gets a little punish off of it. Still, kind of bad DI on a neutral air. Forrest is down a stock. Tomo's at the legendary 69. Something else I want to point out here. A lot of th a lot of times, uh, Forrest has stuffed Tomo's approaches specifically with Ike's back air. You see that he spends a lot of time facing away from, from Tomo, unless Tomo is in severe disadvantage off stage, in which case he'll face forward and like threaten forward air or forward smash or something. But most of the time in neutral exchanges where, where Tomo slightly misses or slightly mistimes a move, he gets punished with a back air. Ike's back air is, is, is big and it's fast. It's like frame five or six or seven, I don't know. It's frame five in Smash 4, I don't know what it is in, in PM, but it's really quick. Um, it's quick, it's large, it's probably safe on shield too, like safe on block, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's just a case of it's just a case of abusing the fact that while Meta Knight does have disjoint, his disjoint is not nearly as large as other characters in front of him and behind him. Um, his disjoint above him and below him, his up air and down air are like freaking ridiculous. His down tilt is large, but it hits low, so it only it only works on grounded opponents pretty much. Um, and his smashes are they're disjointed for sure, but they're also pretty punishable. His back air is actually pretty large too, but. Meta Knight has a lot of trouble dealing with, with characters that have large disjoints who are in front of him. Because the only way he has to challenge that is F tilt, which is laggy and punishable. Down tilt, which doesn't hit people that are above the hitbox, because it's not exceptionally tall. Or forward air, which is, again, punishable and also not very large. Forrest is abusing that with, with just, just getting those hits with back air. There's Tomo going for more sharking, up airs, neutral airs, stuffing everything. Now that right there... That right there was probably just Tomo being a little bit sloppy on his recovery, I'll be honest. He should know better than to get to a place where Forrest can just jump out and forward air him. But at the same time, after the things that Forrest has conditioned him to do, after the ways that he's gotten edgeguard kills, what what else is Tomo gonna think? He's gonna think, okay, I've tried to recover, I've tried to recover low a whole lot, and Forrest has caught it with a forward air, with a forward smash, with stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna recover kind of high instead. But Ike has this thing he can do called jump double jump forward air, which will annihilate any high recovery in a very large range relative to the stage. Tomo is probably starting to think at this point. I've got to mix, like, he's starting to mix up his recovery here. Most of the time he's recovered either down or towards a platform. This time he tried to go high, it didn't quite work. Forrest is threatening recovery angles, I guess, by doing that. And then you saw immediately there, Forrest went right back to the platform. On this stage, as opposed to on PS2, where on PS2 he would go for the quick draw to get to mid-stage and all that stuff, on, on Delfino's, he, he gets a kill, and then he goes to the platform. He just goes straight to the platform. At, at, at relatively low percents, or crouch cancel percents, Meta Knight does have some trouble dealing with characters who are on platforms, just straight up. Like, he's got a really good up air, really good neutral air, he can shark well, but those don't do much against a shielding opponent who's on a platform who's still at crouch cancel percent. <laughs> um, so, Forrest, right there, in, in this particular exchange, abused the armor frames on Eruption. Right there, and he got he got Tomo into another tech situation because it's the same thing that happened in the last stock when he respawned. He hit it with an eruption, put him on a platform tech situation. 
Didn't actually get a punish though because Tomo slid off, which is fine. A little bit of spacing. See, there's another back air. That that bear is huge and fast. There we go. And then there's that recovery again. Actually, in that particular case, now that I think about it, in that instance, he did mix up the timing and spacing on it, which is why he managed to get back to stage. Good. Good on him. That time was another interesting case. Even though even though he got he got uh, Tomo got the legend vulnerability and then dropped off jump nair to get a kill. In this particular recovery case, Forrest instead of jumping and then side being just went straight for the side B, straight for the quick draw. Wall jumped, jumped again, and then went for an up B, which got stuffed with the neutral air. But it was a good recovery. It was a good, it was a good recovery attempt that that Tomo got uh, a good a good read on, because in in a lot of cases when Tomo was recovering, he would go for like a ledge jump nair. He'd get back on stage and go for like a like a back air or something like a down air. That's probably what Forrest was thinking. Um, if Tomo were to do something like that, or if he just hung on the ledge for some reason, then he would be able to, then Forrest would be able to up B up to the platform, or at, actually at that height he would have gotten on the platform, huh? Well, yeah, anyway, good for, good on Tomo for recognizing that and reacting accordingly and getting the neutral air. That's a kill. Tomo went for an, uh, for, for an unsafe... I would say that that up smash on shield was unsafe, but at the same time, Meta Knight is a small character. There isn't a whole, like, like, Ike's out of shield options are actually fairly mediocre. I think the best thing he's got really is, like, Nair out of shield, which is great, but it, it doesn't hit small characters that are below him, especially ones that are behind him and are small. So in that case, that up smash was unsafe, but it still worked because what's, what's Forrest gonna do? Tech rolls away. <laughs> Tomo sees it, goes for a back throw, which, by the way, this is just kind of an aside. Uh, in case you didn't know, uh, Meta Knight is really good at doing tech chases out of throws, like reaction tech chases with throws. But um, his down throw is actually faster than his, or sorry, his back throw is actually faster than his down throw. So between the two of them, they actually make for really good tech chase options. Back throw is kind of sort of better in a lot of cases. Meta Knight thrives on, on tech chases, and back throw is good for setting up tech situations. Like, really good for it, because it's super fast and has a low angle. So that's what he went for there. Went for there. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to take a drink of water real quick. Small pause. Goodness gracious, this has been going on for 42 and a half minutes already. <laughs> nice. I like it. This is fun. Anyway, let's continue on. Back to the platform to get away, back to the platform to get away. Forest platform movement, Forest's, Forest's platform movement is actually pretty fantastic. He's got Tomo in a position right now where Tomo is doing the thing where he doesn't approach. And Forest is currently doing the thing where he's basically saying, by his movement, he's saying, come at me, I dare you. Or, if I can make a pun, I bury you. <laughs> I'm funny. That was... Forrest has done a fairly good job in this set of mixing up his options during the tech chase, the tech chase scenarios, so like mixing up his timings, whether he does a neutral get up, a, a neutral tech, tech roll away or in or something like that. In that particular case there, Tomo actually paused. Like that down throw, there's enough time here to see that Forrest is going to tech roll away towards the ledge. He's done that several times in the set already, but because he's been mixing up his options, Tomo didn't actually immediately punish it. He went in and then he stopped. He let Forrest put up his shield. However, grab Meta Knight. Let's see here. Forrest is going for a lot of back airs, like I said. <laughs> he went for he went for a very a very ballsy read there with that that quick draw reverse up smash. Also, I think I think Forrest is actually maybe sort of kind of sort of past the point where up throw cape will work. Maybe either that or Tomo just messed up the timing. But he ate a forward air for it. Goes for kind of a low recovery with up B, and then gets caught by the reverse hit of Nair, and there you go. There's a stock. 
Once again, as soon as Tomo spawns in, Forrest goes for a platform. This time, however, Tomo actually got an appropriate punish for Forrest going up on the platform. The first two stocks in this game, he went, he tried to go up there with something and ate an eruption and then a tech situation. Well, sort of for the second stock. In this case, second or third, one of them. In this case, uh, he waits for Forrest to, to like act and then he jumps up with a nair. Catches him, gets him off stage. Forrest does the recovery thing and then eats another legend vulnerability charged neutral air. Alright. Forrest actually covering some options really well here. The platform heights are helping him out a lot. That's interesting. ASDI down on the up smash. Yeah, Meta Knight really does have some trouble with, with characters that are holding down. So Forrest, um basically smashed the eye down on that up smash and then rolled away as soon as he recognized he was on stage and could get away. Uh, Tomo went to went to punish that because he he reacted to Forrest rolling away, but he wasn't quite he wasn't he wasn't positioned quite well enough for the next up smash. Or he went for sorry, he went for a grab but didn't quite dash enough up smash. Got got stuffed out again. That sort of stuff. Eats another back air for his for his whiffed up smash. Forrest was trying to cover trying to like by positioning cover some recovery options there by being on the platform. I feel like if he were facing towards the ledge though, he might have done better because then he could threaten either jump out forward air or shield drop forward air. Um, but he didn't do either of those. He was facing away. So Tomo was able to get back. Yep. Yep. Now that was that was interesting. Like I've been saying a lot, Meta Knight really does thrive on tech chase scenarios, and he gets those primarily through either space down tilt, down throw, or back throw, um, or I guess short hop nair. But that's beside the point. In this particular case, normally what you want to do is you want to di that down throw that Tomo just did there away, and then tech in some situation mix up your techs to mix up the tech chases. But what Forrest did there was he di'd up and in. Tomo was paused, waiting for like a tech read, a tech roll. And then Forrest punished him for pausing with, was that a neutral layer? Let's see that again. Yeah, yeah, so he jumps away, he does the defensive thing where when he's in disadvantage, he jumps away, jumps at a hit stun. That was really well timed, by the way. Goes down for a neutral layer and gets a hit. Tomo is off stage, Forrest barely, barely misses with that, with that forward air right there. He's off stage, but he's not dead because Ike's recovery on Delfinos is good. Tomo goes for boost grab and whiffs it. Uh, whiffs it because slight mistiming, I don't know, something like that. Goes for a side B in, and then as pretty much as soon as the hitbox is on side B end, Meta Knight is very vulnerable, so uh, Forrest drops down from the platform that he was on again with a reverse back air, takes the stock, takes the game. So at this point, at this point in the set, Tomo is a little shook. He's a little scared. Um, that doesn't happen a whole lot for Tomo, but but when when you're fighting a player who normally doesn't challenge you, and suddenly you're going even with them in some capacity, and they've just taken a game on you in a best of three set, you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be kind of worried. That was the weirdest water slurping noise I have ever made. Okay, so we move on here. A little bit of a blunder with the with the character skins. Tomo's like, nah, man, I want my cracked my cracked helmet. Looking at bans here, what is Forrest thinking of banning? I don't actually remember what he bans here. Let's see. Personally, if I were him, I would ban this one. Just straight up, I would ban Found of Dreams and probably. I mean, I know that Tomo already banned one of those two. He doesn't want to go here, but I would have banned Found of Dreams and uh, probably Warrior Land. But I don't play Ike, so let's let's let Forrest the Ike Master decide. He bans Smashville and Warrior Land. Now, if he were paying attention, he would have remembered that Tomo actually banned that already, so he probably won't go there. Um, I'll be honest, I, I know already that they go to Battlefield. I am kind of surprised that Tomo didn't pick Fountain of Dreams. Uh, but I suppose at the same time, it does have walls. Forest can recover better. I don't know. It's 
Fountain is a really weird stage. It's, it's like, it's apparently really, really good for Meta Knight or something. I don't know. But anyway, Tomo's thinking about it for a bit. He decides, you know what? I want my triplats, but I want the stage to be relatively small so I can actually get the effective sharking and combos that I'm looking for. So he goes to Battlefield. Forest is okay with this because Battlefield's platform heights are pretty useful for Ike, and I think at this point he's thinking, I'm confident, I know what I can do to beat Tomo. These platforms are gonna help him, I know how to use them too. He starts off the match and immediately does nothing, he just sits there, that is the best. That, like, by just sitting there, he's, he's, he's taunting Tomo, he's like, you, got, you still gotta come at me, and I'm still gonna catch you for it, right? He whiffs, he misses an L cancel and starts to eat a little bit of a punish, and by a little bit, I mean Tomo doing Tomo things, doing Meta Knight things. Battlefield is very, is, is, is certainly quite useful for Meta Knight, because it's the positioning of its platforms and the heights of them are really good for up-air combos, which you just saw there, up-air, near, all that stuff. Now that was something that Forrest has not done this entire set. Jab, jab, grab. Those two jabs lead into grab so well. Like, I don't know if it's guaranteed, but the only way I know to get out of it is to, like, SDI down and then roll away. Otherwise, you're gonna get caught. You're gonna get caught in shield, which is a grab. It's just a free grab. So he gets the throw. He gets the neutral air. Gets a back air. He catches Tomo trying to jump away with that back air. Which is which is which is a good a good a good message to send saying your defensive options don't work either. So in that exchange there, the two of them were basically just trying to space around each other. Um, Meta Knight's neutral air happens to be super fast, so it'll catch things like misspaced aerials and stuff. Up! Oh god, voice crack. <laughs> Up throw cape actually did not kill there. That was extremely good DI from from uh, from Forest. What we're looking at here, Forest has to go for a side B to recover. There's no other way. And I believe that frame we paused on a moment ago was Tomo starting up a back air, like he was just starting the animation. Forest probably knew that was going to happen, so he went for the for the quick draw attack, which is actually remarkably large. Tries to go for another quick draw to get back to center stage. Bad idea, it gets eaten, just like eats a down air, and then that's death. So in that scenario right there, Forrest was trying to go way off stage, like super deep for a forward air edge guard, which he also hasn't really done too much in this set. It didn't quite work out. Uh, yeah, once again, Tomo just kind of barely jumped over that forward air. Um, Forrest had the right idea. I think if he had gone, was that actually, was that a full hop or a short hop? That was a short hop and he inputted the fair fairly late into it. If that, if he had inputted the fair at the height of his jump as opposed to a little bit lower, or if that were a full hop forward air, that would have been a kill because Tomo this whole time is holding in to jump in. He grabs the ledge. Gets a get-up attack to knock him backwards, but doesn't quite doesn't quite pull that off again, uh, because you know Ike's up special hitboxes are freaking wacky. Tomo let him get back onto the platform there. He didn't even try to punish the the tech thing. Like he kind of sort of did. He kind of sort of tried to punish the tech roll options, thinking Forrest was gonna tech roll in. Sorry, I was talking about something else entirely. Wait. I have no idea where those thoughts came from in my head, I'm sorry. Let's go back a bit. Get up attack. Oh, that was, that was Meta Knight who was, I'm sorry, that was Meta Knight who was up there. I am paying attention, I promise. Unsafe back air on shield. Bear on shield, I think is safe when spaced properly. That one was not spaced well. Tomo gets the up throw. But I don't think he necessarily, I don't, he didn't really get anything out of it. He gets the up throw. That could have been a, that, no, that wouldn't have been a cape. No, no, no. Forrest was DI'ing away because he knew he was at low percent. If you DI that up throw away, uh, Meta Knight can't really get a whole lot off of it. 
If you DI any other direction, though, that up air is, I think it's a guaranteed connection. Forrest is whiffing more L cancels in this game than in the last two, which which tells me that he's he's getting fired up, but he's getting a little shaky. That was the most shenanigans recovery I have seen from Domo in a while. He just side B's straight, straight in. I think... I'm not even sure why he did that, actually. Hold on a second, I'm gonna down some more water. My voice is starting to actually hurt. Ugh. Ow. That hurts. Let's go back a little bit farther, see if I can parse this. Meta Knight sharking up airs for days. Gets a lot of them. Forrest does actually manage to challenge those. Uh, he gets the timing between the up airs and gets an eruption out of it. I just accidentally went way back. Hold on. Oh man, I misclicked. No. This is where we want to be. Yeah, this is... Wait, sorry. That's a little too far in. Hold on. Where were we? Dag nabbit. So this happens. Okay, yeah. So we want to be more in here. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I did not mean to misclick that. Somewhere in this area. Where the hell were we? <laughs> okay, farther back? Jesus Christ. Okay, let's just watch a little bit until we get back to where we were. I'm, I'm sorry for misclicking. The progress bar and the pause button are super close to each other and I'm hesitant to use the hotkeys because my recording software might get the wrong idea. So Forrest right there did the thing he does where he jumped out of disadvantage and he went for an eruption, which is a decent landing option when your opponent is Meta Knight and is going for nothing but up air over and over again. This is where we want to be. Forrest had the right idea there with stopping that recovery, but Tomo got the side B in a bit too soon so that I think that was a shield drop Nair or maybe just a just fall through platform Nair. Wasn't quite timed well enough, but he still manages to get a punish. He gets a down throw, a down throw into a dash attack. At that DI... I don't know if that's guaranteed, but that was a really good option. That's also, like, the first or second time uh, Forrest has used dash attack in the whole set, so he's just now introduced it as an option he can use to to uh, to get punishes off of throws. Tomo goes way out there. Uh, does actually side B kind of high because he sees Forrest is on the platform. Um, the only thing Forrest really could have done there would be, like, jump back air, which, for that positioning of that side B probably wouldn't have worked. Um, Tomo does manage to get right back on the ledge. Forrest goes for a ledge dash down smash to, to punish it, which probably would have killed, but it was also a bit too late. Another forward air that could have worked if Forrest had used his second jump, but that would have been a pretty huge risk against, against Tomo, just because Meta Knight is really good at, at gimping, so, you know, it's Good on both of them for, for good on Forrest for making that attempt. It could have worked, but it was also good of him to stay, to stay safe and not use the second jump. And good on Toma for spacing his recovery around it. Now, when I say when I say that that up B is kind of weird to mess with, kind of hard to mess with. Here's an example of why. The fact that this worked was pretty lucky. Tomo went to cancel the glide and, uh, like, in some capacity and grab the ledge to do an edge hog, but instead he got clipped by the weird hits of up B, and then he wasn't able to react in time because that's a really weird situation. So he kind of falls and dies. Forrest gets a stock. In that particular case, Forrest did a hybrid of the things I've been saying he's done after he gets a stock and he wants to wait out the invulnerability timer, uh, the invincibility timer on it. He gets on the platform on Delfinos, but on this stage, since the platforms are closer to the respawn, he gets on the he gets on the platform, which is good. But then he also goes for a quick draw charge, which was an interesting choice, I think. Up throw cape, not quite in kill percent yet. Up throw cape, uh, not quite in kill percent yet. <laughs> Up throw cape is so silly. 
something in this little exchange here that I do want to mention, um, for Forrest in particular. So he does the side B to get to the platform, which is a really, really, uh, a really, really great aid for Ike's recovery is to be able to get to platforms on stages like Battlefield, um, which is fantastic. While he's up there, he shields immediately as soon as he can, which is good because what else is Tomo going to do? It's not like Mennonite has a command grab. He could have probably Waveland grabbed, perhaps, but that would have been like several levels of, what's the word, Yomi or something like that? I don't, I don't know game theory very well. <laughs> Um, what I want to point out here, while Forrest is, while Forrest is on that platform, he goes through three iterations of shielding, right? Three iterations of shielding, and in none of those is he angling his shield. Now, angling your shield is something that I've trained myself to do instinctively, but not every player does it. Not, you don't always need to be able to do it, but it is so incredibly valuable when you're trapped on a platform, especially against a character like Meta Knight who thrives on sharking. Right, so the shield the shield worked in all of those cases, but if Tomo were had like been just just underneath him up airing the whole time, he would have gotten shield poked. Gets back on the platform, actually slides off it, and the fact that he slid off it and then put himself into a tech chase a tech scenario saved him there. Now that there's not a whole lot to say about that. Forrest went for a down air out of shield. Well, maybe not out of shield. Was that out of shield? No, it wasn't out of shield. Um, he missed a back air and then went for a down air there, which that, that short hop down air would absolutely have worked if Tomo were continuing to down tilt, but he didn't. He down smashed. And Meta Knight, that's actually the first time he's used down smash in this set too. Something like that. He's, they're, they're both pulling out some unique tricks in this last game, which is how game threes or game fives, fives usually go. Um, Meta Knight's down smash has remarkably large vertical hitboxes, actually. Uh, well, not vertical hitboxes, but they are remarkably large. And, and during the animation, Meta Knight, I think he does shrink down a little bit, so his hurtbox is smaller. So what happened there... Forrest went for the down air, which was a good idea, but that down smash, that down smash clipped him because of an extended hurt box during the down air animation. Yeah, so when he's doing that down air, his is like, I, as far as I can tell, his legs hang down kind of low. Before the down air hitbox comes out, down smash got him. That's just, and then there you go, it's death. It's death because he was holding down, that's bad DI on a down smash. If he, if he had... He was predicting like a grab or a down tilt. If Tomo had done that, the down air would have worked and he would have gotten, Tomo could have gotten some further punish, or sorry, Forrest could have gotten some further punish, maybe like a grab or something. But um, if he had predicted the the down air, or sorry, the down smash, he would have been DIing better for it. Once again, Forrest jumps out of disadvantage which just lets him get back to stage. In that scenario right there, he was waiting. He was doing this thing I've been saying that he's done this whole set where he was just waiting for Tomo to do something. Tomo right here is thinking, is thinking, okay, I'm gonna threaten space with a forward air. I'm gonna threaten space with a down tilt. And then Forrest is like, nah, nope. Nope, you got, you got, you missed your timing. I, I kept out of your range and then punished you for acting. There you go. More juggle attempts. Neutral airs and stuff. Uh, not a whole lot to say about that. Reverse up is a is a pretty good recovery option for Meta Knight, especially on a character like like Ike, who generally has slow punish options. Generally, in life. Tombo grabbing right there was probably a misinput. It might also have been just predicting a roll. Forrest immediately jumps out of hits, jumps out of a disadvantage. He does like he does that so much. He jumps out of disadvantage. He spends a lot of time waiting and stuffs a lot of approaches with bear. That was a really interesting recovery mix-up right there. This is the first time Tomo's gone low with a with a tornado. Tornado's hitboxes are actually also fairly large. Like, I know this is a recurring theme for the character, but Meta Knight's hitboxes are actually really big. 
most of the time. He does struggle against characters with larger disjoint, a la Ike. He, he can struggle anyway, but his hitboxes themselves are still pretty big. Let's go back a little bit farther and watch this again. Forrest grabs the ledge, jumps away, and starts to input a back air there. That was either a back air or a neutral air. Actually, wait. For that sword position, that probably was a neutral air. He was going for another reverse nair, which he'd gotten uh, already once in the set in game one for a kill. I think it was game one for a kill. Uh, Tomo probably knew that was going to happen and decided to go in with some really fast, really large hitboxes, a la Tornado. Good recovery mix-up. And then, as soon as as soon as Forrest gets back to the stage, he immediately, once again, runs away. This is a recurring theme throughout this whole set. If you want to beat this particular Meta Knight, TM87, Tomo, the legend, then you just gotta just, just keep away from him. Another up throw cape for guaranteed damage, but no kill. Now this is interesting, uh, Forrest is down a whole stock, right? Tries to go up high with a forward air to cover high recovery. Um, Tomo, most of the time when he recovers, he tends to go... Like, legitimately, most of the time, he tends to go at about, like, mid-height relative to the stage and the top of the screen. Maybe a little bit lower than that. Um, let's see if I can get a better view so I can sort of demonstrate what I'm talking about. I really hope you can see the mouse, too. You should be able to. Most of the time when Tomo recovers, he tends to recover in this general range right here. If he's knocked away, his, his, as he uses Meta Knight's three aerial jumps, his jump arc usually goes through this space. When he recovers with specials, unless he's already really low, he tends to go kind of high, goes for like an up B or, um, or like a cape sort of kind of downwards or something like that. So Forrest jumping out like he does right around here, jumping way up there with a forward air is not necessarily a bad option. Um, he was thinking that Tomo would, would, would try to jump in kind of high, but then Tomo drops down and uses a special in that general area that I mentioned, a side special in this case. Forrest has enough time to shield, goes for a dare out of shield to punish it, which I don't think would have been fast enough, would not have the frame advantage necessary to work. Tomo punishes with a nair. Forrest manages to get back to the stage by using the hitbox, by using the, the strike from quick draw, which is... Basically just saying, you can threaten me if you want, but your edgeguarding techniques also are, you know, they're subject to disjoint, to, to, to disjoint beating them out. Forrest gets into the situation where he's got, um, he's got, like, stage control, I guess? And part of his stage control is being on platforms and moving between them accordingly. Move between them to threaten space and bull areas. Yes. That was a good juke by Tomo there. Um, Forrest saw he went for the cape, reacted with the shield. Tomo, instead of using the hit out of interdimensional cape, just paused in front of him and got a down smash. Okay, that grab, that grab, and that dash attack were sincerely all just luck. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say there. They were just lucky. We've got an even stock count, but Forrest is still down quite a ways. What he was trying to do right there was, again, use the platforms during Tomo's respawn and vulnerability to get away. He was trying to do a side B edge cancel right there, probably so he could like jump back up and juke movement and stuff. But instead he gets on the other platform and shields it. Tomo actually does not punish that. The fact that Tomo threw out a jab right there really tells me that he's starting to get he's like he's getting more and more more and more flustered as the as the game goes on and the fact that he misses some obvious punishes he's trying to wall out to wall out forest with back airs which is you know a, a decent defensive strategy considering how large the hitbox is when your opponent is like forest who likes to jump a lot to get out of disadvantage or to get in um if you keep covering that space behind you that high up with with meta knight's back air you're you're gonna stuff some approaches right but forest Forrest in that scenario did not do anything. He stayed away out of that range, and then he moved back up and down between the platforms again as sort of a juking defensive type move. He drops shield and gets caught with a neutral air, loses a stock, and that's that. Not a whole lot to say about that. Tomo went for a wave land on the platform. He missed it. They're, they're both getting antsy about, about how this is going. Forrest dropping some guaranteed punishes, Tomo dropping some movement. 
Yeah, those were just a series of flubs. Shield. Hold on, was that a shield drop? Was that a shield drop nair? It kind of looked like a shield drop nair. I want to watch it. Nope, just to fall through nair. Fall through nair to cover space. That was a curious case right there. Um, let me just go back and watch that edge guard attempt again. So, Tomo is off stage. Side B is to the ledge. Forest does a side B to the ledge again. Um, what Tomo was thinking here. Oh my god, excuse me. By inputting this getup attack was that Forest is going to be kind of in this general area. The getup attack is going to get a reverse hit, and that's going to set him up for some easy gimps. But Forest knows this. And instead of just letting that happen, he does the wall jump out of a side B on this itty bitty wall on Battlefield. Does the wall jump out of his side B, avoids the getup attack, and does another side B with it with, with the hit to get back on stage. Tumble kind of sees that coming, rolls away. And then Forrest gets gets some more stuff. Now, like I said a little while ago, that down throw to, to forward air thing that he barely missed earlier becomes important. Tomo rolls away, seeing that Forrest is going to go in with that hit right there. If Forrest had not gone with the quick draw attack and had just continued in, after that roll, Tomo would have easily been able to punish it with a, with, um, like a short hop nair, like a nair out of shield or something. Instead, Forrest gets back on stage, sees that Tomo will probably go in for some kind of punish on the lag on side B, which, uh, which in, in Tomo's case would most likely be a grab from what he's done in the past during the set. Forrest spot dodges it, turns out it's an up smash, relatively similar frame data, so it's still as punishable. Gets a grab, gets a down throw. That DI on the down throw was probably more like away and maybe a little up than than like than down and away, which is what he would have wanted to get out of this situation. That forward air clips him, and that's pretty much a dead meta knight. Like he has some recovery options, but Forrest knows where they're going to go and puts himself in the right positions accordingly to, to actually cover those options. Tomo is way out there. He has, to, he has to use his jumps, and then he has to use a recovery that will get him a long distance. Um, he goes for the upbeat, which is a good choice. He can move up and down and, and sort of like mix up where you're going to go. Once he uses that up B, the only other option he has from that position is the tornado, which once again, Forrest punishes with very like very with, with some extreme efficiency. He gets the ledge jump bear, and that's a stock. Now right there you saw Forrest drop down through the platform and probably went for a wave land, but just kinda air dodged instead. Either that or he was thinking of inputting an aerial and then L canceling it, but but missed the the timing slightly. So you can see it's obvious they're both getting pretty heated. Look at these intense faces, by the way. Look at these guys. Tomo is looking pretty strong here. He's getting punishes. He's getting getting puni getting uh, getting forest up on platforms where he can get some easy meta knight punishes like nair and up air and stuff. He is not, however, going out to edge guard Forest anymore because at this point he's down to his last stock. They're both down to last stock, and Tomo knows based on the fact that he lost a stock to just getting clipped by the weirdness of Ike's up B earlier. That if he goes out there for an edge guard, Forest has tricks that can that can easily easily turn into a, rever a reversal situation. Forrest goes for the quick draw. Like, once again, another situation where Tomo is just straight up more content to hold center stage than, than actually go out and, like, like challenge Ike's recovery options. That's not necessarily a bad idea. That's very much in Tomo's playstyle to do. But Forrest has been playing this entire set where he's just playing around that by saying, I don't care if you have center stage, you still have to come to me, and I'm still going to hit you for it. Forrest does uh, does do a recovery mix-up by going up to the platform, which, um, for what Tomo was up to, kind of sort of dash dancing, fox trotting in the middle, um, wasn't a bad idea, but it could have easily been punished. However, Forrest did get the edge cancel into was that a forward air, neutral air? I think it was a forward air. That's crouch cancel down smashed. Oh, reverse bear. Okay. Now that right there, that up throw cape barely whiffed tomo is getting antsy he missed the input timing slightly and as a result it cost him the set i think that might have killed 
I think that I actually think that might have killed. Was that on the top platform too? So he gets the up throw onto the top platform. Yes. Yeah, so that that cape would have killed. Um. Of course it didn't. That left Tomo in some free fall lag, which Forrest could have punished, and he kind of sort of went for it, but he got onto the platform, and instead of being able to input, instead of being able to wave land on the platform like he wanted, he just got an air dodge off of it because he was too far in. He didn't get a punish. Tomo stuffing out some recovery stuff. Forrest goes for the only counter in the set and whiffs it, but Tomo doesn't get... He doesn't quite get the proper punish. He wanted down tilt reverse bear, which would have killed, but because it wasn't reverse, it didn't kill. Look at this deficit. Look at this deficit. That is that is frightening. Forrest actually manages to get back to stage by once again using uh, Quick Draw's attack function's hitbox. You saw Tomo was going to was winding up a back air right there. If it weren't for that hitbox on Quick Draw, the back air would have hit again. There's a lot of situations like that in this game where Forrest would have been dead if Tomo had had his execution and spacing down perfectly, but because he was starting to get flustered because he's not losing, but Forrest basically has the set momentum, like the, the game, three game set momentum. Because of that, Tomo's starting to get, you know, he's getting, he's getting scared. From that position, Tomo gets, well, actually, let's, let's take a look at why that forward air, why that forward air connected. He gets the hit there. Tomo probably could have wiggled out of hit stun or jumped out of it or something, but because he's a little antsy, Oh, you know what happened there, actually, I think. Yeah, he was going for the for the short hop bear to stuff recovery. Um, he got knocked away from that with the quick draw hitbox, and because he was going to L cancel that backer, he had inputted shield, which is why he missed this tech. Forrest caught the missed tech with a forward air. And then that right there was just a demonstration of how incredibly horrible Meta Knight's tech roll is. Like, it's so bad and so slow and does not go very far. Forrest gets the back hit of down smash on that tech roll. <clears throat> okay, that air dodge getting the ledge was just luck. Meta Knight privilege. Rude. You saw in there, though, Tomo went for, like, an uncharacteristic roll. He's, he's, he's obviously frightened at this point. Forrest falls through the pla- Actually, how did he get that neutral air? Tomo goes for a roll on stage. Two rolls in a few second time span. That is uncharacteristic of him, but it's just obvious that he's he's getting frustrated. He's getting flustered. Forrest falls through the platform with a neutral air, sets up for a forward air. That's a kill. That's the set. Ain't it great? Ain't it great? I just spent an hour and 17 minutes, an hour and 18 minutes analyzing a 12 minute set this is fun um so yeah ultimately the takeaway here is that tomo is really good but tomo has some very specific patterns that can be worked around the fact that he doesn't approach if you play a character that can force your opponent to approach all the time and you play a character who has good punishes on that on those approaches you can get around you can get around what tomo does and it's not just tomo in particular it's defensive meta knights in general and then as for forest he, he did the thing that he's been saying for a while he's been working on, where he, he's playing like he's hanging back, he's, he's being kind of campy, he's sticking to the platforms, and he's, he's abusing his character's large disjoint, especially with that back air. That back air caught Tomo so many times from his approaches. Tomo's approaches, most of the time when he comes at you, are grounded. Because, well, Tomo's approach game isn't necessarily the best in the world. So, um, because of that... All Forrest really had to do was jump over his approaches, like a boost grab, dash grab, uh, jump cancel grab, running down tilt, something like that. Just jump over it and hit him with a bear. Over and over again. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, that's that's it, really. Um, my voice is in ex my throat is in extreme pain. Uh, I have not said this many words in this short of a time span in months. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go not talk for the next three days. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I will catch all of you in the future with another video. Here's to hoping the recording turned out okay, right?